Okay, next up, I am pleased to introduce Paula Stander, Ambassador for VIA Benefits, who is going to help you prepare for Medicare enrollment. Hi, Paula. Are Hi, you there? Michael. Hi. How are How's you? How are you doing? Good. Good. Well, thanks for being here. Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with that right now. Yeah, feel free to go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Let me find my... Okay. There we go. All right. It's all right. great to be here with all of you today. And my name is Paula Stander, and I've been with Via Benefits for 13 years now. And I'm also on Medicare. So my job today is just to help you understand more about Medicare and simplify all of this. So what we're going to do today is just I'm going to go through introducing us who we are the pre-enrollment part, Medicare, that's the Medicare assessment, of course, Medicare basics, your enrollment, which is very important, what happens after you enroll, and of course, your HRA funding. So the next steps will be the last thing that we talk about, and that way you'll be all set to go. So first thing is introducing us, and we are seriously the first and largest private Medicare marketplace. And what that means is, when you turn 65 and you get all that mail from all those different insurance carriers that's confusing, we put all of those into one place. So we represent over 120 different insurance carriers. So we love that you can call just one place and find out all the plans and compare them to find the one that fits you. This is our 17th enrollment season. We've helped over 2.3 million retirees from wonderful companies such as Acera. And we have a very good, I love this, this percentage because 98% of the retirees feel they chose the right plan using VIA Benefits. So I'm excited to be part of VIA Benefits. Now, if you want to contact VIA Benefits, there's two ways. You can call us at 888-427-8730, dedicated to ACERA retirees. Our care team is, is based in the United States. So if you're like me and I call someone about my health care, I want to know if I can understand them. So we have three service centers. One's in Salt Lake City, Utah, where I live. One's in Phoenix, Arizona, and one's in Dallas, Texas. So now you know when you call and speak to somebody, you'll know where they live and you know they're all in the United States. Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 4 p.m., Pacific time. So we're excited for you to call. Now, for those of you who love computers, of course, you can contact us by the by computer. So go to my.viabenefits.com forward slash Asira. And that's obviously available at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, your pre-enrollment, very important. First of all, we, you want to create a profile on the website. So remember, it's my.viabenefits.com forward slash Asera. So when you go in there, you're going to see this landing page. You'll know you you know you're on the right page because up here at the top, via benefits and Asera, there are two tabs. One's Medicare, one's individual and family, but you don't need that one if you're 65. You're Medicare. So here you are on your landing page. In order to start the whole process, you got to sign up first. After that, you'll come in and sign in. So when you sign up, you'll just give them your name, your address, set up a password, and now you've created your profile. So then we're going to do a Medicare assessment. Now, during your assessment, we're going to verify your profile that you set up if needed, talk about your coverage needs, and evaluate the different types of plans, whether it's Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement, which we call Medigap. And your Part D prescription drug plans are very important. You make a plan type recommendation, and we will do that for you by looking, looking at all these, simplifying them, bringing them down into one plan that will fit. So we'll recommend that plan. If you're enrolling by phone, you want to schedule that enrollment appointment as soon as you can. Now, here's the number, 888-427-8730, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. So Medicare Basics. Interesting how we start this, but we recommend, we, we actually represent all the different types of plans that Medicare has. Medicare Advantage plans are actually called Part C of Medicare, Medigap plans, and prescription drug. Now, you have wonderful dental and vision plans that are group plans through ACERA, but we do offer those, but you have also, you have all of those things that you need if you're doing the group plan. 
Now on the bottom, I wanted to bring up a point here because you'll notice we represent over 120 different insurance carriers, but I wanted to make sure you know we have the top ones, the, the national ones that you recognize, Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, AARP, Humana. But when you're looking for Silver Script and Express Scripts, I want to bring up a real quick point. You can find them. Silver Script would be under Aetna because Aetna accumulated Silver Script and Cigna accumulated Express Script. So if you're looking for those drug plans, they would be under those carriers' names. Okay, now here we go. You first get your Medicare card. Now you've got this big red, white, and blue Medicare card with your name, a big long number, and Part A and Part B. Part A covers hospital, Part B covers doctors and outpatient. Part A we earn if we've worked 40 quarters in our life or our spouse has, now we've qualified for the Part A and that is premium free as long as we've worked those 40 quarters because we've already paid for it. Part B, we all have to pay for it. And the average amount is $170.10 a month. But for those of us who are higher income earners, we're gonna pay a little more for Part B. Just be prepared. You'll get a letter from Social Security every year saying, because of your taxes, here's what we, we will be asking you to pay for Part B. Now, obviously, if you're getting your Social Security check, it automatically comes out before you get it. So now you have Part A and Part B of Medicare pays 80% of your costs. It doesn't pay the rest. So now you're thinking, I don't want to pay that 20%. And good for you because it can be a lot. If you're in the hospital or emergency room and you see the total bill, you don't want to pay that 20%. So you want something that supplements that 20% so you don't have to pay it. So this is where your choice comes in. You're either going to choose a Medicare Advantage plan or you're going to choose a Medigap plan. You can't have both. Now, just think about this. These are both good plans. Some people don't understand the difference, so I'm going to show you the difference. First of all, Medicare Advantage plans come with prescription drug. They're bundled in. Medigap plans do not. That is a separate plan that you have to add. Now, here, let's talk about these specifically. I myself chose a Medicare Advantage plan, and I chose it for one reason. It was a really small premium. I pay $0 per month for this plan. I don't have a deductible that I have to meet. And when I see my primary care physician, I don't even have a copay. So I love this plan, but I have to remind you about Medicare Advantage plans. I call them pay as you go plans because the premium is small, but you're going to pay later. Now, what I mean by that is there could be copays. If I'm in the hospital, I have to pay co-pays for the first five days, and it's around $300 a day. So I'm healthy, and right now, this is the plan that I really like. Now, you have a choice of an HMO or a PPO. We've already had this kind of in a discussion today with Delta Dental. HMOs are restricted. You have to go to their specific doctors and hospitals, like Kaiser. Kaiser's an HMO, great company. Or you choose a PPO. PPOs are more freedom because you can go in or out of the network. So really you could choose any doctor, but remember with a PPO, you're gonna pay more if you're out of network because Medicare Advantage plans are sort of area where you live area-based, they're all network-based. You've gotta stay within a network. So when you look at Medicare Advantage, remember two things, they're network-based and you have to, and, and you're gonna pay as you go. Now, one other thing that's been added to Medicare Advantage plans through all the COVID stuff in the last two years is some of them have added some great things called optional benefits. Now, please remember, not all of these plans have all the optional benefits. So you'll want to check either with an advisor or look online under optional benefits because you could have free transportation to your doctor. Vision Dental may be included. Also, you could have a gym membership. You can also have all kinds of other things that are optional benefits with these plans. So it's kind of fun to check those out. So remember, Medicare Advantage plans are wonderful plans with real small premiums, but you're going to pay later on. There may be some co-pays that you, not, you need to pay. So now you've, got, you've heard of Medicare Advantage. Now let's go to the Medigap side. Now, Medigap plans are completely different than Medicare Advantage because Medigap plans are regulated by the state you live in and Medicare. 
Medicare, Medigap plans are not regulated by any insurance company. Insurance companies have no say on how these plans cover you. Now, what happens with this is there will be letters of the alphabet, like letter A through letter N, and every one of those different plans cover you a little differently, and I'll show you a chart that will help. But none of these plans include prescription drug. So yes, you will have a payment for your Medicare supplement plan, your Medigap, and you'll have a premium to pay for your prescription drug plan. They're completely separate. You'll even carry two different cards for your Medicare supplement and your prescription drug. Now, here's the thing I like to tell you about these plans. Here's the big difference in Medicare Advantage and Medigap. Medigap plans allow you to go to any doctor in the United States of America and you're covered as long as the doctor accepts Medicare patients. So you can go to any doctor. So if you're a person who travels a lot or you live half the year in another state, then this may be something to look at and consider. So when you look at Medigap plans, you're gonna pay it all up front. You're not gonna pay later. Because if you have a Medigap plan, you pay a larger premium. But if you're in the hospital, no cost. Everything is covered. If you're in the emergency room, it's all covered. There are no co-pays, depending on the one you choose. So these are things to think about when you're looking at the differences in these plans. Now, here's something that will help you understand all of what I'm talking about. In our book called Medicare and You, I'm going to leave this on here for just a second, because if you're Medicare age, we get this white book every year. I just got my new one probably about a month ago, the 2023. It's a big white book. And in it, there's a lot of information. Most people never look at it, but there's a lot of great information in there. This chart is on page 76 in that book. And it's exactly the same every year. It will be in that Medicare new book. Now, those of you that don't have that book, go to medicare.gov. It's on the right on the landing page. It says Medicare and you. You can look at that book. But on page 76 is this great chart. All of the Medigap plans, are, these are all the lettered plans across the top. Underneath each letter, it shows you how that plan covers you. The least covered plan is an A. The most coverage is the G. Now, you're going to notice over here on the side, here in green, there's a C and an F. Now, let me explain this. Medicare decided in 2020 that they were no longer going to pay in any Medigap plan. They weren't going to cover the Part B deductible. So you'll notice down here, Part B deductible, none of these plans pay it. But there was a plan that was offered, the Plan F. F as in Frank was the most popular Medigap plan because it was the most comprehensive. If you are not Medicare eligible by January 1st of 2020, you no longer have the option of a plan F or C. So if you are, if you were 65 or Medicare eligible by January 1st of 2020, you can still get a plan F. Otherwise, your most comprehensive will be the G. And the only difference in a G and an F is the Part B deductible. And that's $233 per year, which ends up being about $17 a month. That's the only difference in the C and the, or the G and the F. Now, I want to bring up a point here. When you look at Medigap plans, you have to understand that all the insurance companies that offer them can charge you a different amount. So I want you to understand this very carefully. Look, when you're looking at Medigap plans and you decide, hey, I want a plan G, look for the one that's charging the least amount for that plan G because the plan G is exactly the same. A G is a G. It doesn't matter who the insurance company is. They have no control of how this covers you. So get the one that charges the least amount. It makes more sense. Now, one other thing with Medigap plans. If you want to move from a Medicare Advantage, let's say I enrolled in this Medicare Advantage plan. I've had it for four years now. Let's say when later on when I'm not really healthy, I want to move to the Medigap plan. If I want to move to that Medigap plan, I live in the state of Utah, they will underwrite me, which means they're going to ask me health questions. But there are different states that don't do that anymore. So certain states. Now, California has something called the California birthday rule. And that means if you've enrolled in a Medigap plan, you can change that Medigap plan without underwriting. So it's a great rule to have in California. So these are things that you should understand about Medigap plans, but they are very comprehensive. So let me explain again. Medigap plans, you're going to pay it all up front. Everything else will be paid for, of course, other, other than the Part B deductible. So you're going to have that. Now, 
There's no network. So you can go to any doctor you choose as long as they accept Medicare patients. So that's the difference in Medicare Advantage and Medigap. And they're great plans, both of them. Just depends on which one you feel is more comfortable for you. Now, remember, you have to choose a drug plan with these with the Medigap plan. So be prepared when you talk to us via benefits. We're going to ask you what prescriptions you take because every prescription drug plan has its own formulary. Those are the drugs they cover and how much they want to charge you for them. And we all know when you have prescriptions, there are generics, there are brand names and there are specialty drugs, and they go up in price as this list goes down. So we want to find the plan that's going to charge you the least amount for whatever drugs you're taking. So that's the purpose of that. Now, every year, as we go through the year, we all have these different phases that we might go through with your, your prescription drug plan. We may have to meet the deductible, and it could be anywhere from zero to $505 a year. Once we've met the deductible, we move into this initial coverage phase. And if you'll notice, this initial coverage phase is, the, is where we mostly stay. 75% of us in Medicare never leave initial coverage during the year, which means we just pay the copay that the, the plan says we need to pay. And when we go to the drugstore and we pick up a drug, and I'm going to use an example of simvastatin, which is Lipitor, it would be a zero copay for me, but they're going to keep track. My insurance company is going to keep track of the retail cost of that drug. And let's say the retail cost is $100. So when you see these costs over here, that's just the retail cost of the drugs that you picked up. We don't pay this amount over here. It's just what moves us from level from phases to phases. So once you've, you've actually picked up drugs, the total $4,660, you'll move into the coverage gap or the donut hole. Now, I don't want you to worry about this donut hole. It's not really that bad. The only difference is there are no more copays. You'll just pay 25% of whatever the retail cost is for that drug. So let's use the simvastatin example again. If the, if the retail cost of simvastatin is $100, you'd pay $25. And they're still keeping track of the retail cost over here. So once it reaches $7,400, then the last level that you could actually enter is the catastrophic coverage level. Now, please know, only 4% of people in Medicare, and remember, there's 60 million of us in Medicare, only 4% reach that. Now, you know who you are. Some people have specialty drugs or um, like my mother had an injection that was $3,500 a month. Now she didn't pay that, but she had to have it, but it put her in catastrophic coverage very quickly. And so when you get to this coverage, please know you'll only pay $4.15 for generics and $10.35 for branding or 5%. So you're not paying anything over that. So don't worry if you reach that level, but your insurance company will send you a letter every month that explains where you are in this little level thing that we have to go through every year. And every month you'll get that letter from your insurance carrier. Please don't worry about remembering all this stuff. You don't have to. You can just call us if you have any questions. Okay, your enrollment, very important for you to enroll. You can choose two ways to enroll. You can either enroll by phone or you can enroll online. If you enroll over the phone with an advisor, which is great, we, re we really do like that when you do that, but it's gonna take 45 minutes. So we're gonna go through all the information with you. There's uh, disclaimers that we have to read. So that takes 45 minutes. But if you're okay enrolling online in your plan, it's gonna take 15 minutes because you read those disclaimers to yourself. It doesn't take as long, but if you're not comfortable with that, please know. You want to make an appointment and you can enroll over the phone with an advisor. Online, it's kind of like shopping on Amazon. You put it in the cart, it walks you through everything step by step. And also remember, you can call us. If you're on the website and there's a question, call us, we'll help you through that too. So those are the two ways to enroll. Now, after you enroll, you'll get a confirmation letter from us. And that confirmation letter is a receipt. It says, here's the plans you enrolled in. And you'll keep that for your records and if you look at it and think, mm, I don't know if that's the right plan, call us. You can change your mind all the way up to December 30th. So your communications from your insurance carrier will also be sent to you in a large packet. Then it will have your insurance cards in there. And so you can be able to read through every little detail of your plan if you'd like to do that. And then there will also be information about your new funding account. Now, visit my.viabenefits.com forward slash Acera, and you can watch a wonderful video, a little short video that says, welcome to Via Benefits. Now, 
you're going to also get a VM, VIA benefits reimbursement guide. And that will come probably around the first part of January. It'll contain all the necessary instructions on how to use your HRA, including setting up your direct deposit and use of the mobile app. Now, you know we have an app for your phone now that's free called VIA Benefits Mobile App. So you can download on, on your phone and do all of this from your, from your cell phone. And this all should arrive within the two weeks of the date that your new coverage begins. Now, to qualify for your funding, you have to enroll in a medical or prescription drug plan through VIA Benefits before your enrollment period ends to have access to your HRA. And again, when does your enrollment period end? December 30th. And you must remain enrolled through VIA Benefits to continue to have access to your HRA. See, I'm gonna bring up a real quick point. If you decide, okay, I've got, I've got this plan and next year you think I'll just call the insurance company directly and move it to a different plan. If you do that, the prices are exactly the same, whether it's with us or the insurance company directly. But if you did that, you would lose your HRA. So don't do that. Just make sure you go through via benefits. Now, what is your HRA? Health reimbursement account, IRS guidelines. This is on everything they want us to do to make sure this is a tax-free account. And it's used to reimburse you for eligible healthcare expenses. If you're eligible, a CERO will make an annual contribution to your HRA. So they take the money, they put it in an account for you over here, and it reimburses you after you spend the money. You get reimbursed for your eligible plan premiums. So your premium for your plan, you're going to set it up to make your payment to your, to your insurance carrier. Now, your HRA funding begins January 1st of 2023, and unused funds do not roll over. You've got to use it make sure you use the funds because they will be there for you. Now, let me explain just a little bit. You are responsible to make your premium payment to the insurance company. So you make your premium payment, however you want to do it. You can do it, send them, a, they can send you a bill. You can do it online. You can also have your, have it automatically drafted from your checking account. So you, then you submit for reimbursement request either on the mobile app or online or via benefits approves the request and reimburses you. Now, of course, you can be reimbursed for the amount available in your HRA. Now, the thing I wanna bring up a, a point here too, which before I move forward, you can set this all up on automatic, automatic premium payment. So you make your premium payment, however that's made, the insurance company sends us the receipt at via benefits. As soon as we get it, we can direct deposit that money back in your account. So make sure you set up that direct deposit and it's on any premium, on any premium that you have that's a premium for medical, dental, vision, or prescription drug. So we can set that up as well, or you can set it up on the website automatically. Now, the next steps are simple. Create a via benefits profile at my.viabenefits.com forward slash Acera. Include your providers, your prescriptions, your pharmacy that you like, add your email address, call us at 888-427-8730. And then of course, schedule your enrollment appointment either during your call or online. There are a couple of videos to watch too that will help you through this. Intro to Via Benefits and, and you, one's called Create a Via Benefits Profile. Now, your enrollment, you call us at your scheduled appointment time during your enrollment window, which is during the annual enrollment period that we're in right now, October 15th through December 7th. And I apologize, you don't have till December 30th, you have till December 7th. So, uh, at October 15th through December 7th. And there, I enroll using the VIA Benefits website anytime starting October 15th. Now, the help videos are prepare to enroll, shop and enroll using VIA Benefits, and the enrollment continues, it does say here, until December 30th. Now, now I've really confused you. So we'll make sure we get that taken care of, but it says enrollment continues. So watch for your communications about your new coverage. Welcome to VIA Benefits is that great little video that I said you should watch. Now, my.viabenefits.com forward slash Sarah is the website. The number you should call is 888-427-8730, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much. Now we can get Mike back on here and hopefully I'll get this taken care of. Do they have till December 50 or 30th or till December 7th? For the Medicare? Yes. Um, let me look at the guide real fast. So 
for the Via Benefits Medicare plans, they have until December 7th. That's what I thought. To enroll. So that, that's, I'm so sorry it, to confuse all of you like that, but you are enrolling during the annual enrollment period. And that's December 7th. I'm sorry, October 15th through December 7th. So because of that, every year, you know, you can change your plan during this time period. And there's certainly a lot of commercials on TV that let us and remind us about that. So we've got plenty of those. Thank you so much, Paula. <laughs> yes. It looks like we have about 18 minutes left. Um, so are you ready for some questions? I certainly am. Great. Okay, question number one, why can't I find non-Medicare enrollment info on the VIA website? And you, If you go to the website and you want non-Medicare, now, if you remember, I showed you there are two tabs, family, family plans, individual and family plans. If you go to that tab, then you'll see those because that's under the marketplace. That's for people who are not 65. So we can help you with that part. Okay, great. And actually, I will. I can show you that site real fast. Thank you, Mike. That would be great. Sure. So here is the uh, here's the website, and you can see that there's two different tabs. So if you click on the Medicare tab, you go over to the Medicare side. So you would want to. Um, Actually, I don't see the tabs to get back. Maybe that's what. Okay, that's what the, the issue was. Just use the back arrow on that. Yeah, it would be a back arrow. So we actually have. Um, so you could go to this address, marketplace.viabenefits.com/slash/sarah. Okay. Is that the shortest one that you have? That is the shortest one, and they can okay. also reach it from the Medicare one too, though, like we were showing you from that tab. So okay. the easiest one for them, if they are not 65, is marketplace.viabenefits.com forward okay. slash Sarah. And we actually created a shortcut that takes you right to that site. If you go to a sarah.org slash via, it will take you right to, to this site um, Wonderful. for the non-Medicare um, information. And what I was just showing you is the back page of our enrollment guide that you're all getting in the mail. So it has all the links in it. Right. And if you didn't receive that, if I'm sorry, Mike, make sure. sure that you know, if you go to the website, it shows you all the publications that were sent. So if you did not receive that or you've lost that, you can see that guide on the website. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and actually, since you bring that up, let me show you where to, where to get a Sarah's Open Enrollment Packet right from our website. Currently, it's the second um, news slider on our homepage, sarah.org. And so you just click that and it takes you right to our open enrollment page. And uh, you could also just type in acera.org slash OE for open enrollment and it'll take you right to this page. And then you can um, access PDF copies of all of the items in the open enrollment packet that you're about to receive in the mail. That's great, Mike. Okay, next question. Can you use VIA benefits in any state? Any out-of-country coverage if considering moving to another country? Okay. Yes, you can use VIA benefits in any state. And if you're moving out of the country, you, will, you would actually have coverage for six months on some plans, the Medigap plans, like the Plan F has coverage out of the country. But remember, it would be 80%. It wouldn't be the full like when you're in the United States, and it would not last more than six months. So if you're planning on doing that, you need to make sure you talk to a benefit advisor and they'll walk you through the process. Great. At what age do you start pre-enrollment? And they're saying uh -huh. there'll be 62 in April of next year. Okay. So your pre-enrollment can start right then. So you need to make sure that you go online and register or call us. So your pre-enrollment for that if you're making sure that you've got coverage and you're retiring, but you don't have the group coverage, then call us and we'll help you through that part. And, and just to be clear, if they're 62, they would probably be going into a non-Medicare via benefits oh, plan. Oh, absolutely. Until they reach 65. So you would go to the individual and family tab on the website to see those plans. Great. Next question. Will via benefits automatically reimburse premiums from the HRA as done in previous years? 
Yes, that will not change. That will be the same as in previous years, correct? Great. Does VIA benefits only apply to those who are currently under Medicare? In other words, people who are 66 and a half and up. Oh, yeah. Anybody who's, if you're over 65, 65 and over, we'll be more than happy to help you with any of those Medicare plans. You are eligible for those Medicare plans. And we we have many people who can walk you through anything, or you can just look online on the website at plans if you'd like. And regarding regarding who can enroll in a VIA benefits plan. So at Acera, if you want to get healthcare coverage through us, we offer the group plans that we contract with um, through Kaiser Permanente and United Healthcare. And then we also contract with VIA benefits to offer individual plans to all of you. And so if you're Medicare eligible, I'll do that part first. You can get, if you want to, you can get a VIA benefits individual plan anywhere you live in the United States. Um, if you are not yet Medicare eligible, if, if you're looking for an individual plan through VIA benefits, you would have to live outside one of our group plan service areas. And our service areas for our group plans are the Bay Area, um, Sacramento, Fresno, Southern California, and for Kaiser Permanente, I think there's uh, Santa Cruz in there. And so if you live outside one of the, and it's, and it's kind of mostly based on zip code. Um, so if you live outside one of those areas, then you can, and you're not Medicare eligible, then you can enroll in a VIA benefits plan. If you live inside one of those areas and you're not Medicare eligible, then you would have to choose one of our group plans if you want insurance through ACERA. Correct. That's a lot to remember. It is a lot to remember. Um, I, we do have a web page about that. Um, let me show that to you. So if you go under retirees and you go down to healthcare plans and benefits and then click on getting and managing healthcare coverage, getting and managing health coverage. Um, so you, so it, it will start off showing you the healthcare plan options. Okay. Now you're going to want to scroll down a little bit um, to Who can enroll in healthcare plans? Actually, it's this one, plan service areas. Your eligibility is based on where you live. So this tells you what the service areas are for the ACERA group plans. And then it tells you what the individual plan service areas are. And then you can determine if you meet the criteria to um, get a group plan or one of the individual plans through via benefits. That's really great information for them. Thanks. Okay, so next question. We have about 10 minutes left. Do you still use um, the Medicare tab in VIA Benefits if you have assigned your Medicare to an HMO such as Kaiser? Well, if, you're, if you've assigned that to Kaiser, then you've already made your choice. I mean, you can look at the plans and compare them, but once you've made your choice, then that's the, the one that you'd be in. I think, yeah, and it sounds like they might be asking if they're going to choose the Kaiser Permanente Senior Advantage plan that we have a direct contract with, um, right. then they wouldn't be using the VIA benefits tab to enroll in that plan. They'd be using one of our uh, enrollment forms. Yeah. There, there are instructions for that in the enrollment guide, and I think the instructions for how to enroll in a, the Kaiser Permanente Senior Advantage plan versus one of the VIA Benefits Medicare plans. Um, I think the instructions start on page five. It's it's the first section in the book. Okay, next question. What is Part G, as in golf? That's Plan G. Now there's plan four G. parts to Medicare. There's Part A, Part B, Part C, and Part D. But then we're talking about the plan. Remember, you've got your Medicare that pays 80%, then you're adding a supplement to it. So if you're talking about Medigap, then Medigap has all those lettered plans. And Plan G is one of those lettered plans. The most comprehensive Medigap plan is a Plan G. Okay, great. And then there's another um, question about Kaiser. I selected Kaiser Senior Advantage from Medicare. Do I need Part C and D or... The Medigap as well. And so Kaiser Permanente is a sen senior advantage plan. So all of that's baked in. 
the the yeah, party is baked in a Kaiser Permanente. It's a, yeah, it's a Medicare Advantage plan, so medical and prescription drug are included. Yeah. Okay, so next question. I will be 65 in July next year. When do I sign up? You'll be 65 in July. Three months before that is when you would start looking at plans. So three months before July is March. Is it March, April, May, June? No, it'd be June, April, April, May, June, July. Yeah, in April, I would go online and start looking and making sure that you have your Medicare card. That's number one. So you got to register with Social Security. So you've got your Medicare. And then I would start looking three months before. So it gives you plenty of time to look at the different plans. You can actually enroll during those three months and then your plan would be effective the first day of July of your birthday month. Thanks. And then um, let me, that's a good time for me to do a little pitch about our Medicare transition webinar that we do every other month. Good. So if you go to our website and you go under news and events and go down to Medicare seminars, um, you can enroll in one of our Medicare transition seminars. Um, it looks like we have not yet released um, all of the ones for next year, but um, when it's becoming time for you to transition into Medicare a few months beforehand, you can go ahead and register for that webinar. And in fact, when you're turning 65 as a retiree, we will actually send you a letter in the mail inviting you to register for that um, Medicare uh, transition webinar and uh, reminding you about it. It's great for them to go to that. That will really help. Okay. Next question. I have a Medicare card and haven't used it. I still use my Kaiser card. Do I call you to start using Medicare? If you're on Kaiser and your Medicare age, you are actually using Medicare because Medicare pays Kaiser to take care of you. So your Medicare card, they just say, once you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage type plan, which is what Kaiser is, you really don't need your Medicare card. When you go to the doctor, you just use your Kaiser insurance card. So that's what you present at the doctor's office, but you are using Medicare. Great. That's good news. Yeah, it is. So um, next question, and we have about six minutes left. I'm not understanding the HRA. Who is eligible? What is this for? Am I a new retiree? I am a new retiree and I do not remember any information about this or via benefits. I'm confused. Let me um, let me start off and then I'll turn it over to you by saying that what we're talking about when we're talking about the HRA, the health reimbursement account at Via Benefits is a Sarah's monthly medical allowance benefit. So the monthly medical allowance is a medical subsidy that we provide to eligible members to help them pay for the cost of being enrolled in medical coverage through a Sarah. The, there, the criteria for you to be eligible for the monthly medical allowance is that it's based on um, years of service credit when you retired, years of a Sarah service credit. So it's the bottom level starts at 10 years of a Sarah service credit. So if you retired with at least 10 years of a Sarah service credit, you're eligible for the first level of the monthly medical allowance. If you have at least 15 years of service credit, you're eligible for the next level up. And then if you have, if you retired with at least 20 years of a Sarah service credit, you're eligible for the full monthly medical allowance amount. And there's more information about this in that retiree enrollment guide. Um, but so what happens is if you are eligible for the monthly medical allowance and you enroll in an individual plan through via benefits, then what ACERA will do is send that monthly medical allowance money over to via benefits and they'll put it in your health reimbursement account for you. And then you can submit reimbursement claims to via benefits to access that monthly medical allowance amount of money. Do you have anything to add about that? Oh, that is very well stated, Michael, Thank because you. that it's an important thing for people to understand and it is confusing. And so Definitely. that guide will really help, but it's also wonderful to have that monthly amount that will help you with your premiums that you're paying. So when you call in and you talk to an, an agent, they have that on their screen and they will work with you and say, if you get this plan, you'll get this much money from Acera to help you pay when you get after you've paid that. Just remember the most important thing is you have to pay first and then you get reimbursed which is why the account is tax-free. 
Excellent. So next question, I'll be turning 52 early next year. I'm currently enrolled in a Kaiser HMO plan. Should I be enrolling in a senior plan or can I remain in my current Kaiser plan? Please advise. So you're not, you're not going to be, you're not Medicare eligible. Uh, you're, you're not near Medicare eligibility. Um, it doesn't sound like because you're 52 and me Medicare eligibility generally starts at 65 unless you have a qualifying condition um, that gets you in earlier. Um, so if you're in the Kaiser HMO plan, um, that tells me that you are living in one of our group plan service areas. So your choices would be either the Kaiser HMO or the two United Healthcare HMO plans. Um, and if, cause if you're living in that service area, you wouldn't be eligible to enroll in an individual plan through via benefits, unless you moved out of that area in the future, and then you would want to give via benefits a call. Correct. Very, very well stated, Mike. Thank you. Next question. I will be eligible for Medicare in June of next year. Can you help me on the enrollment and when I can do it? How, how does the HRA process work with this? Do you help them enroll in the HRA as well? We will walk them through how, in fact, what they do, but it's it, they're automatically enrolled in the HRA when they enroll in a plan through via benefits. And so Great. we'll walk them through how much money they have and, and walk them through about how which plan would work better for them, but they will automatically qualify when they enroll. Great. So yeah, look out for that. Letter from a Sarah inviting you to the Medicare transition webinar. Probably if you're going to turn 65 in June, it might be in um, April or May that you'll receive that letter in the mail. Yes. Next, next question. Does the HRA cover costs for dependents? It does not. Because the HRA really is a Sarah's monthly medical allowance subsidy Um the monthly medical allowance, the way that the board of Sarah's board of retirement has set up that benefit is it will only pay for the costs that our members incur. So it doesn't pay for any of your family members costs. You can still enroll them in the medical plan, but you can't use the HRA money to get reimbursed for any of the costs for their medical care. That's correct. Okay. One person just says a comment. Wow, so much information on Medicare. So overwhelming. <laughs> it is overwhelming. I totally agree. Yeah. That's why it's great to watch the videos we have on our website or just to call us. Yeah, right? Because um, you're yeah. there to help. Um, you can always call a Sarah for help. Um, we have a healthcare unit at Sarah. We have a call center and their entire job is to guide you through things like this. Um, we will additionally, that's, and that's actually a good segue because we're out of time. We will additionally be posting this, the video of this presentation out on the healthcare page, probably tomorrow or Monday. Um, so you can rewatch it and get some of the details that maybe you missed, um, or watch it as many times as you want, or fast forward to the part that you are looking for. Um, mm -hmm. so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. And then um, we, I've also already placed the PowerPoint presentation for actually all of the presenters out on the healthcare page. So you can go ahead and already access the PowerPoint presentation. And um, yeah, like I said, um, if you need extra help, give us a call or give via benefits a call. Oh, absolutely. We'd love to help any way we can. Thank you so much for this presentation, Paula. It was really excellent. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thanks for being here uh, with us. Sure.